It's Jamie with Ham Racing, and today we are working on a Toyota 4Runner. Customer states that the shifter does not always want to go into park, therefore the key gets locked in the ignition switch, and the only way that he could shut the car off is to leave an accessory which power still stays on and drains the battery, therefore he has to jump the car every time. So, a common thing on these is the shifter bushings like to wear out and they get a horrible play in the shifter which will not allow you to put it into park. Therefore, the key gets locked in ignition. So, we assume that that is the cause. As you can see here, there's a lot of play. They could they could use some you know some Viagra or something to assist with that. So I've got a set of Dorman bushings here I picked up from my Raleigh's. Open this up. I'm gonna go with one hand. Oh. So there are two rods on the shifter. And we're gonna get that disconnected from the transmission and get this pulled out. Y'all stay tuned. All right, so I've got the plastic off around the shifter. Oh man, boy, let's show it to us. Now, that disconnected, so I can take All this is a mess. They want to get all of this unplugged. Out the way. And there's a I don't think I'm going to be able to film and do this at the same time, guys. Look. You can see I don't, a lot of slop in here. So I've got to get all this disconnected. And since I don't have a way to hold my camera up and do this, it seems like uh, we'll have to just take pictures and do step by step. So I can show y'all. So I can't do this one handed. So y'all stay tuned. Right, so we got the shifter out. Yeah, it's time for us to start turning it apart. So we're gonna take this rod out. Kind of hard to see because I've got shadow. See a wiggle there? A bushing is completely shot. Now there is a bushing on both sides of that rod. And this rod down here that actually connects to the transmission. We're going to take care of both of those. So what you want to do is first you're going to take this rod off. Which Twelve millimeter. It's pretty strong, isn't it? And 
then this rod right here is in the way so we actually have to take a screwdriver Phillips head and take the shifter off so I've got to grab my Phillips head Now, there are three small Phillips heads here. We're going to take that out of the way. So we're going to actually take that bolt out, get to that rod, and replace those bushings. Cheers. There we go. Let's get to break it loose with the pliers. You want to be careful. Because our wire is connected to that. Here's the shaft. And not here. You can see, there's no bushings left on that rod. So I've got to grab the bushings. Out the forerunner because I left them in the seat. I'll be right back. One second. And the hardest part of this job is really just taking all this apart so you can get to it. It's actually a rather simple job. Now you're going to take. You got four of these little bushings. Slide it in. Now we set this one back. In place. back in
is a 12. So the bolt head itself is a Okay, 14. So I'm going to take that 14. I'm going to send that screwdriver. Or that screw all the way home. I just had somebody pull my driveway. Make sure uh, nothing odd was going to happen. All right. So now that that is all the way in, we're going to put this nut back on. I'm not sure if it's going to the house. Now I'm going to secure this first one. Make sure it's getting snug. that back up. Is that goofed? That's my dog. Make sure I'm safe. Shadow. Hush. So what happened was I didn't pay attention when I uh, put the rod back in. And the shifter was actually down in those Grooves, which I know is hard to see. So, tap that back out real quick. Alright, so, prod the rod back out with some pliers. Put some pliers. Tap that back in. Take our nut, put it on. Here by 14 we'll ratchet with socket on. Send that baby back. Yep. Work table uh, rocking, so don't come and knock me. So it seems that those two are the only bushings that might be messed up, but since it's already out, I'm going to go ahead and replace the bottom two bushings. I'm just going to get this plate back on first. Now. You've got to make sure that you hook up your neutral safety switch. And what you're going to do, now it's hard to see, you're going to push down the button. You're going to make sure that rod is 
that's sitting in between that plastic notch. And you're gonna take your tiny little screws and put them back in. And I suggest putting the top ones in first, that way it holds up against the rod. Alright, now, you're going to go underneath here. You've got to lift up this rubber boot and the nut is right up under it. Now this should also be the same size, a 12 mil. So, suck it on here? Yep, correct. Same size. Let's see if I can pry up the other side and take a look. First side does barely has a nut on it for a bolt head. I really don't think that that's gonna affect anything. So and it didn't. gloves Get that down here so everybody can see what is going on take this rubber boot off I need this into your trim tool I'm just going to wedge it and pry it off and then we can knock this rod out Pulled right out. Take the other side of this boot off. And there are actually no bushings in this guy either. Um, sorry, it's hard to see here. I'm working the shade. Uh, just over here. So, sorry about the lighting today. And the part that I didn't show you, which I will, when I go to put it back in, is how it connects to the transmission. I got ahead of myself before I started videoing. And 
took it apart. Thinking about it. Now I'm just tapping this rod back in. To place here. Snug. Now you want to put the rubber dust cover back on. Much is not. Easy of a job. And I like that first one. I just made it look like a breeze. Well, it's not. So. That metal pin came out. Bushing, where you want to call it. So that makes getting the rubber situated. Gloves are nice, but uh, they can be a hindrance. Alright, so that back in the spot. So I'm gonna slide this dowel back in place. Let's get that one. And that's that. Now it's time to go put it back in. But maybe not. For whatever reason here. Does not want to move. So I've got to get this figured out. Is what went wrong? It's in the slot that it should be in. Everything's back in place. So let me get this figured out. i no, stay tuned. All right. So I was having issues with the gear selector. Not want to come on part so the issue is actually the fact this button here was missing so that is the other reason why it will not go in and out of gear so until right. so this plus pressure 
on the switch and now I can take it in and out of gear. I remove thy screwdriver and there you can't see it but there's an arm you see I just move that puts pressure on that solenoid which allows you to take it in and out of gear without that it doesn't know what gear it is in and you won't be able to do anything with your key got two more bolts to find so I'm gonna find those real quick we'll get that button up slide the plastic pieces in here get the shift knob back on the four-wheel drive and uh, I think I bought it I'm going to go ahead and connect this plug now if you forget that well you're gonna be in world of hurt and have to take everything back apart just to put that on now oh, the shifter doesn't want to move but See if that's gonna do it. No, not enough pressure. So this back up over here. Bam. Just need some pressure to it. Which is what that button's for. That's messing. What a pain. What a pain. All right, the last piece of the puzzle is putting this back on. You see how I've got it marked. Oh, bad. Got the camera out of place here. Get this set on and buttoned up. All right, so got to make sure the flat part of that bolt is wound up so you can get that rod over the bolt. And this is a 13 millimeter nut. Now, I took a Sharpie and marked it originally, so you want to make sure you put it in the same spot that you had marked, and then snug it. Once snugged, she is done. So, the shifter bushing install is complete, and I have the truck currently running. Turns out that you do not need that screwdriver in place. You can see I am moving. But apparently you do not need that button in place in order to drive the vehicle. But I would go on and get it since you 
have it on order just to make sure that it is not a problem and if it does become a problem before you get the button like I stated earlier you use the screwdriver wedge it in there and that will allow you to shift gears.